you think the fans appreciate how dangerous this Cal State Bakersfield team is? You know, talking to their coach uh, and looking at some of their numbers, they very ERA team ERA is on the two. Uh, the number three starter held Arizona State to one run in nine innings. Sounds like they're a pretty good baseball team coming here. And they're an excellent team. There's no question about that from top to bottom. And you know, Coach Esposito and, and Coach Kernan were together yeah, right. at North Carolina State, which is really how this series came about. Uh, a lot of times in baseball, scheduling is done by relationships outside of your conference. And uh, that's what happened in this case. And I, I've reminded him often in the last couple of weeks about this scheduling <laughs> that he took part in here. Uh, they, they, their ERA is under two. They got Rodriguez behind the plate, who's highly touted as a catcher. Like you said, they beat Arizona State. They they swept Washington to be Washington State. Beat Kansas. Uh, they're excellent. They're they're a tremendous team, and uh, we got our hands full, no doubt about it. And then to answer your question, I think a lot of our baseball fans that really follow us closely, they sort of scout opponents other than the league. And uh, I've had a few people comment in the last couple of days that you got a tough team coming in. So we're. We're well prepared. We understand that, and it's not going to be one of those situations where, oh, Bakersfield snuck up on us. They ain't not going to, they're not sneaking up on us. They're 11 and three. They got great numbers. They got pitchers. They've got uh, tremendous personnel, and, and uh, we'll, we're going to try to be as prepared as we can. Uh, Coach, a two-part question here. One, are you relieved that the, the drama from the Clemson weekends behind you to get back just to playing baseball? And two, with a Top 30 Bakersfield team coming in. You guys getting some more work. Is that, do you think it's good preparation for the upcoming conference schedule to play another team that, that can beat you two out of three? Yes, I'm relieved that all that's behind us. You know, that being said, uh, three games that we played against Clemson was like, you know, another conference weekend. Very intense, a quality team, a top 10 team. And you, you, you're going to be in a lot of those in the SEC, and they're going to be in a lot of those in the ACC. So. I think those games you know, help you grow, they help you understand where you are. Uh, it's behind us now. I, I hate we got rained out against Davidson, but we did in fact get a practice in before the rain. We're hoping to get a little bit of work in today and, and we jump back into it. I think uh, this weekend and then the next two weeks, we've got five game, a five game week, so we've got a lot of baseball ahead of us. Ray, um, I guess every team's got um, different chemistry and different chemical makeup. And, to have an early series that was so intense so early in the season, like you set it up with Clemson, how do you think your kids performed as you look back on it, the three-game series? Not only the game itself, but all, of course all the other things that came with it. Well, we had, you know, from a baseball standpoint, we had a couple of situations where maybe we didn't play particularly well. The one game where we had the four errors, I, that's uncharacteristic of us. I don't think it was one of those games that – we just kicked it all over the place. A couple of balls in the outfield were errors, and uh, Mooney had a couple of tough plays where a guy might have advanced the base after he failed to make a, a play on a hit, so you get like a hit and an error. Uh, but that enabled them to score some runs. We, um, we, we pitched the ball pretty well for the most part, a couple of innings here and there. So, you know, between the lines, we battled, we stayed in the position. Even the game we didn't play particularly well, we had a chance to win before they had the big eight in the middle game. So we, we did some good things, but they're so good that they took some things away from us because of their ability, and uh, that, that's the way it's going to be. You're going to have to battle against the really good teams, and uh, baseball, they say, will even out if you play it the right way. It, to answer the second part of your question, I was um, kind of, I guess on Monday I had a team meeting concerning the situation that we were in going into the rubber game on Tuesday. and. Uh, Majority of the time when I have a team meeting, I do the talking. And, uh, you know, maybe one of the assistant coaches and we share some things. And in this particular case, I did a lot of listening. And we had some fun. You know, we, you know it was just us. So we shared some, some thoughts and uh, it was interesting. But it was a good time. It was kind of a bunch of guys together, you know, talking about what had occurred and laughing about it, not taking it too seriously. Um, and for me, it was like, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. These guys are having fun, uh, despite maybe the intensity part of it. And maybe down the road, that'll make a difference. You know, you're gonna you're gonna win your share. You're gonna lose your share. And there are a lot of games you're gonna be in the bouts. And and maybe that bond will be there. You know, during the critical part of our schedule.
Ray, I was just going to ask you, after winning a hardball series against your arch rival and uh, with the whole bad game incident, is your team a stronger team coming out of this? Uh, you mentioned that bond. Is that bond between brothers even tighter now? Well, it, it, it might be. I, you know, I, I'd like to think that we were in a good situation going in because we had some experience coming back. A lot of guys have played together last year. So I'd like to think it, it was there from the beginning, but um, I, I think, you know, it's one of those deals where they care about each other and they're going to try to help each other out in times of adversity. And, um, you know, it's, we're going to have challenges along the way. Hopefully they'll all be between the lines. But uh, I think when you're a, a close-knit team and you look out for each other, there's a chance that you can win some, some games in the bouts where the intangibles kick in. So, you know, I, I hope that, you know, it's a situation that, that becomes an advantage for us in the long run. Coach, this is my first time covering you guys. Have there been other situations in the past where there have been accusations made or other kind of blow-ups? I don't think that uh, – I can't remember over the years. There might have been a situation here and there, but occasionally there's some um, chippiness that occurs because of the rivalry. And it's not all bad. It's just part of uh, a rivalry. You know, you – you're, it, it's high spirited. You're excited. You say some things, maybe, and you, you play that way. And it's a little bit more than normal circumstances, possibly. But it, it's been it's been been really healthy for a long, long time. And you know, recently it was not like it needs to be. And Coach Leggett and I have agreed to uh, move forward with it. And uh, let's let's play baseball. And just to follow up there, were you glad Jack took the initiative to call? And also, were you able to clear the air in? General terms, do you feel better? Yeah, I do. I um, you know, we left that uh, we left that game Tuesday probably not in the best way possible, and uh, the fact that he picked up the phone and called, I, I think was was a good thing. We we we've known each other for a long time, not not just uh, in the 15 years that I've been here and the 17 he's been at Clemson, but we played against each other when he was at Western and I was at NC State, so we go back a long way. And, and I think that was important that we were able to share some things with each other and move past it. You know, we, you know we, we're competitors. And, uh, you know, you don't have to agree on everything, but you'd like to respect each other. So we cleared, we cleared the air and said, hey, let's go. Good luck to you. And he said good luck to us. And, you know, hope, hopefully we get a chance to play at the end of the year. And if we, we get a chance to play again, great. Um. Also wanted to ask about um, Christian Walker. I mean, he just um, still continues to hit. Um, you knew he was a really good hitter as a freshman. He started right away. I mean, what have you seen in terms of his progress? He just seems to keep, keep getting better. Yeah, I think the most important thing with him right now is, although he's still a young player, he's a sophomore in the early part of the season, he's, he's mature. He's maturing as we go. He, thrown into this environment as a true freshman last year, that's, that's a daunting challenge. And he got out of the blocks and then he had a over weekend at East Carolina, if you remember, and that set him back a little bit probably. But he's, he's maturing quickly and he believes in his ability. And as I've said before, of all the guys that I've coached in my career, his hand-eye coordination is really special. You know, he, as a hitter, uh, you have to make adjustments. Pitchers do not throw the same speed, the same pitch. They try to, they try to get you off balance, and they try to trick you a little bit. He can adjust. He's a guy that can, can make adjustments with his hands and get get the bat on the ball. And when you do that, you got a chance to get some hits. And he's certainly done that in our first ten games. I'm just going to um, ask. Do, do, he's clearly in, in better shape. He lost weight. Do, do you think that's made a difference in his progress? Probably did increase his bat speed a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you know big guys can get that thing through the zone, but other times it gets retarded a little bit if you're if you're not in your best shape. And he's probably down. I'm guessing close to 20 pounds from where he was at one point, and that, that probably has enhanced his bat speed a little bit with a better work ethic in the weight room. What was the reason be a thought kind of decision to throw Steven on, on Saturday and then move uh, Tyler into a force to, uh, to Sunday? Well, I don't think it's anything having to do with, with not being happy with Tyler. Tyler's got pretty good numbers. So we, we feel like we've got to get Neff in a better situation. And he pitched really well in the preseason. He kind of got relegated to the bullpen because of his experience coming from the bullpen. He might have deserved an opportunity to start that he didn't get. And uh, Adam Westmoreland has pitched well. I thought he did a great job for us on Tuesday night. 
I hope that, that it's a problem. I hope that I have, you know, Coach Myers and I have problems going forward about who our guys are. But it, it just seems like the right thing to do right now to give Neff another start out there. He started in that Furman game. And uh, so, again, we're happy with Tyler, but we, we think Neff needs to get out there. He could be out there on Sunday. Uh, we're also going to take a look at Kumas possibly. Or we could piggyback Webb out of the bullpen. He, he's pitched out of the bullpen some as a freshman. You know, he got some starts, but he pitched out of the bullpen as well. The fact that you have Kumas listed as a possible starter on Sunday, is that sort of a clue that you guys the long range plan for four? Is that to make him, like, try to make him a weekend starter? I don't know yet. I, I think it's still too early. Um, you know, he's got a power arm. He has a chance. You, you can look at him pitch and say, hey, you know, he might be a nice closer one day. True. He also might be a quality starter one day. He needs to get more experience. What he did on Tuesday night was invaluable. To put him in the fire against the rival, you know, not not on the road necessarily, but in a neutral environment uh, with a packed house, that will help you grow up. And I think he, it happened perfectly almost for him. Had he gone one, two, three in the night, I'm not sure it would have been the most beneficial for him because he had pitched so well. The fact that he pitched great and then he wasn't able to finish it helps you grow even more. And um, you know, he ended up getting a win, but it was a tremendous outing for him. And We've got to we got to give him some opportunities to get him better. I mean, we we had pitched him a little bit, but if we do start him on Sunday, that gives him another opportunity to grow. The way Jake obviously with the home run on Tuesday, are you looking out the possible move toward a, a platoon situation there in left field with Evan? The way the way Jake's hitting the ball, or is it just going to just try to match up type situation on the game game by game basis? It's going to be game by game. I, I um obviously you got to think about Jake Williams. You know, he's had some opportunities already. He's done He's done really well. Big hit off the bench for us um, in that game as a pinch hitter against Clemson. So he needs to, he needs more opportunities. Uh, but it'll be a game by game based on, you know, our matchups and those kind of things. But, you know, we, we knew going into the year. We, we knew that, you know, he was a guy. And you can only play three out there at a time. But he's certainly a guy worthy of getting some opportunities. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks, guys.